Hey guys, this is Chris Mills with surfstrengthcoach.com and workoutmaster.com. Today, I'm gonna to be going over some hip mobility work, uh, stretches and mobilizations. As surfers, hip mobility is really important. Uh, we spend most of our time either sitting on the board or if you're actually surfing, you're in a squat position or a lunge position. If you are lacking proper hip mobility, uh, it's gonna affect that and it's most likely gonna affect you in your lower back or your knees, and it's probably gonna be in a bad way. Uh, so, it's easy to start working on this stuff and improving mobility in your hips. It's just a matter of figuring out where you're tight, and then using the right mobilizations and the right stretches just to help loosen up that tissue or whatever's holding you back. I'm gonna be showing you a series of stuff today uh, to correct various areas of the hip structure. Um, basically, it's up to you to go through the majority of this Pick out a few where you seem to be the tightest or the most limited and start incorporating that in your everyday workouts and your stretches. Um, like I said, hip mobility. It's really important for us surfers. Got to have loose hips, uh, do all the proper maneuvers, rotations, and like I said, just sitting on a board. Um, so, take a look at what I'm about to show you. Pick out a few to start working on and start improving your hips. The hip flexor quad static stretch, you're looking to stretch muscles, uh, the quads, the rectus femoris, and also your iliopsoas complex. Um, the leg down is the one that we are stretching. Notice the foot is on the ball, so we're getting a good quad stretch. I'm going to elongate that side of the torso, reaching towards the ceiling with the same side arm, and slightly rotating away. Again, you want to feel this stretch through the front of your thigh and also through the front of the hip and you're going to hold each side for about 20 seconds, performing one to two stretches per side. So to stretch out the hamstrings, uh, most people will fall short when they're stretching out the hamstrings because they don't really isolate the hamstring muscle. Uh, they end up compensating their low back. And again, that's what we're trying not to do. So you can use a rolled up towel, yoga mat, you want it no, really, no larger than that. You want to lay on this, and that's going to be the small of your back, around your L3, L4, and lay back. That's isolating the movement, so you're not going to allow the pelvis to rotate. You're only going to allow it to stretch through the hamstring. Knee comes up, drive the leg up to the ceiling. Hold for about 10 seconds. Relax, drive, 10 seconds. You're actively stretching this muscle and down. Again, this roll is helping to isolate the stretch into the hamstring rather than allowing you to compensate by tucking your pelvis under and achieving movement through your spine. A little tighter on that side. Down. And that's a hamstring stretch. This is a 90-90 hip stretch. Great stretch, uh, utilizing or stretching, mobilizing lots of different muscles through the hip complex. Um, need to be picky with your form. Thigh coming straight off the body, 90 degree bend at the knee. This other leg comes completely laterally off the body, 90 degree bend. You need to keep proper posture through your lumbar spine and tall chest. You're going to see a better, uh, you're going to get a better idea of what I mean by that when I switch uh, directions. So again, tall posture. You need to be picky about form. So, completely lateral, so it's coming 90 degrees off the body. 90 degrees off the body, straight forward. Tall posture. With what I mean about lumbar posture, you want to keep somewhat of this kind of Donald Duck butt. Stick that butt out. We don't want you to fold over through that lumbar spine. Then you're compensating through your spine. That's exactly what we're not trying to do. We're trying to open up those hips. So, get a proper lordotic lumbar posture when you kind of have that curve, the butt slightly sticking out. Tall chest and lean forward so you feel a stretch again. As we lean forward, I'm not collapsing the spine. I'm staying tall, keeping posture through that lumbar spine. Hold five seconds, deep breaths, and come out of it. Make 
sure you're still keeping proper, proper posture through that lumbar spine. You can internally rotate the chest slightly. Hits a bit different muscle group and up. Externally rotate and up. Do a quick one on the other side for you to see an idea. Again, it's a 90-90. Back posture, we're not here, we're here. And forward. This is the active stability ball adductor stretch. You're gonna sit on a ball, legs and feet pretty wide apart, and you're gonna roll from side to side, finding areas of tension in that hip joint. Most likely you'll feel tight through the groin area, possibly the hamstrings and just slowly work into the tighter areas, seeing if you can get them to loosen up. A few repetitions per side is a great one. This is working on lateral hip mobility, feet three and a half to four feet apart. Uh, you're basically laterally lunging from side to side. Great warm up, great for pre-surf. Make sure you've done some stretches prior to doing this mobilization. This is Basically a rotational squat, similar to the one previous. If you notice the L stance with the feet, this is starting to put some rotation into those hip joints. Again, a great warm up. Notice the L stance with the feet and make sure you've done some warm ups and stretches prior to doing this. This, this is a relatively active mobilization. This movement's working on internal hip rotation. You want to lay on your back, feet a few inches wider than the f hips. You want to lightly tighten your core, so slightly draw in your belly button. And you want to bring the knees together. On an effort of 0 to 10 scale, you want to use an effort of about 5 to 6, nothing too severe. A few reps of this prior to your workouts is great. So there you go. Lots of options, mobilization, stretches. Start working on your hip mobility. As surfers, proper movement in that hip joint, it's important not only for prevention of injury, but also performance. If you're not moving well in that hip, you're gonna compensate your spine or your knees most likely, and it's probably gonna lead to an injury at some point. So start working on this stuff. Go through these, find which ones you're tight or limited or restricted in, and start working on it. Use it in your warm-ups, use it in your workout routines, or just do it a couple times a week before you go to bed. You are only going to benefit from loosening up those hips. So thanks for watching. Start using these. This is Chris Mills with WorkoutMaster.com and SurfStrengthCoach.com.